Okay. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is a lot of times people that go into, everyone has like a pain story um, in terms of when they make the jump. I was uh, on like um, one of these Muslim companies, they teach you how to make online Muslim business, right? Recently. And part of the sales thing was like pain points about not getting enough time for Juma and stuff like that. One thing I, I want to emphasize is touched on at the start is like, if you're young, you can make do with it, but try and visualize the pain points to motivate yourself because otherwise you can get um otherwise you can get a bit too comfortable yes. and then you might not even feel that you have to feed that motivation what would you say for you i know you mentioned like the first day you went for salah when you started working so did your planning start then what was like the in terms of the way you thought about it how did you go how did you go through the steps that like you always had it in your mind to work towards it or was there like a specific moment I think for me, I've always been the sort of person to um, challenge myself more and more. Uh, and I think it was more of a case that um, I understood also that I didn't want to um, spend my life working a job, basically. I didn't want to be 50 years old, Allah Mustan, if Allah even allows me to live that long, but I didn't want to be 50 years old. And my child says, what's the best memories you've ever lived? And it's never going to be my job, right? It's, but, but that's 60, about 75% of my time, right? Um, so I think it was just a case of, for me, in particularly, it was a case of like, I wanted to have, um, I wanted to be able to do what I am told to do in this world, which is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do more. So yeah, for me, well, it's, it's, it's tough. For me, um, I always want to do more and that's not necessarily because of the money some people actually look at me like this and i find it amusing the but they think that oh it's because i want more and more money like it's it's not if you actually knew my lifestyle but i don't drive a car if you see me like like and maybe inshallah I'm, i think i need to get a car anyway but i haven't driven a car for like the last three as in i haven't owned a car for the last three years i'm not the sort of person who is actually like loves to buy a lot of things or anything like that mm. but but i enjoy it and i see it more of a enjoyment so you know i'll set something up and four months later i'd be like oh yeah okay that's set up now and i want to set something else up so i think it's something that i enjoy more than mm. anything yeah that's definitely like a potential criticism that people get that's why i wanted to put the disclaimer out there at the start right it doesn't really make a difference because those who want to complain will complain anyway but I, I don't know if you've heard of um i know you're pakistani so you might have heard of azad jaiwala yeah of course of course so he has that same thing i love his content he's he's getting very big now it's all urdu focused and stuff mm -hmm. like that but he often tries to emphasize that because people have that mindset of like money is evil kind of thing but it's how you use it yes of course and um yeah so and then the next thing that i wanted to kind of move on to is at the very least having uh, multiple sources of income um it diversifies your risk isn't it meaning yes, like yes. diversifies your risk and your risk by the will of allah right because um otherwise you're dependent if you're on one source like one manager <clears throat> has control over your whole livelihood yeah i call it like a integrity buffer you're going to be much more likely to do certain things that you might not be 100 comfortable with because yeah. your whole life depends on it kind of thing right yeah. well it doesn't it depends on a lot but how we think sometimes so that's definitely another point that we uh, should mention